Hey there, offstage actors. Good to see you again. Let me ask you this. Are you a fan of the audiobooks? Have you ever, as an actor or an aspiring actor, said to yourself, I would like to read over 100 audiobooks for a living. I think I'd be good at that. I would like to try. How about this? Do you like the movies? Are you a fan of the motion pictures? What about Poor Things? Pretty good movie. Emma Stone just won Best Actress Award at the Academy Awards last night. Hmm? Hmm? Well, I want to introduce you to an actress who has done both of those things. Her name is Kate Hanford. She's engaging. She's talented. And she has just been in the new Poor Things movie opposite Mark Ruffalo and Emma Stone. And she has read over 100 audiobooks. Amazing. The rest of us just listen to them. She reads them. How does she do it? Well, you're going to find out. You are going to meet Kate Hanford, and I don't want to hesitate anymore. I just want you to enjoy the experience. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. I know I did. Ladies and gentlemen, without further hesitation, Kate Hanford. There it is. The mm -hmm. theme song no, gives us all the more? energy we need. You know, I'm still not tired of it. No, I don't think you ever will be because it's funky. The funk mm -hmm. is tireless. Welcome back to the Offstage Acting Podcast. Hello. We're going for it yet again. We haven't been kicked off the airwaves just yet. Thank, thank. you for joining. Thank. 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 I like that. Just thank. Just thank. Not <laughs> you, not me. Just thank. Thank. And thank for... A... <laughs> How you doing, Jay? Thank What's to what? the listeners. Thank, thank the listeners. To... Thank. Yeah, thank. Thank. Thankest be. Um, how am I What's doing? I'm doing yeah. great, Talk actually. Me. Tell me. I'm doing great. I'm being cast in things. It's busy. My life is busy. And I am thankful. I am thankful. I'm full of thank. Good. You're That's full how of I thank. Am. <laughs> how are you? I love that. I have, um, I'm, I'm half full of thank, I think. I think okay. my thank right. tank is about a little, little over half full, my thank tank. Your thank tank? Well, it's good. It's not half empty. Means you well, I'm a, I'm a I'm a thank tank is kind of is half full kind of guy. Mm. Good. <laughs> That's good. That's how way the saying goes. <laughs> way too exhaust. Way too exhaust. Exhaust. Exhaust a metaphor much? Yeah. Um, I'm glad you're getting jobs. Are you really getting jobs, or is that like? I am. Well, I got one. Uh, I, I don't know if that. I can say the like. I'm actually really thank. I got one cool job for an audio drama, and I love the role. Mm. Mm. It, the script is really, it's a day and a half of recording, and I'm just so thank, and I'm excited. I've been preparing every day, and it's, I just love the text, cool. and I, I'm thank, yeah. Is so a radio, good. like a radio drama, BBC or something? It's an audio, it's an audio drama. It's like for, can I say what it's for? I don't know. It, sure. I just sign things, and then I'm like, I'm just not going to talk about anything, and I'm, I'm not going to read it. I'm just not going to talk. Well, you say audio um, drama. Where is it, where is it going to Like be? on Audible. Okay. Oh, are they doing audio drama now on Audible? Audio like, drama. Yes, they are. Yeah, they, yeah I'm not. Back in the that. day, I mean, up until recently, BBC was kind of the place you could do. They, they, BBC were still doing radio plays, radio drama on BBC. Um, but it makes sense that Audible would switch over to that. I have not heard of that, but I love a good radio drama. Yeah, it's well, because it's a radio drama based off like a based off a book. Right. So it, it has mm, a, it ha mm -hmm. it's centered still around the book itself. Right. Okay. Speaking yeah. of books, uh -huh. I tell you why I'm only half full of thank because I'm working on these Mark Twain books and I'm yes. I wanted to ask you. You asked me last time what makes it difficult, and I, as I was doing it, all I could think about is why is it so difficult. Um, <clears throat> and I was talking about the energy and and all yeah, this, yeah. the kind of effort that it takes, um, the preparation, which I, uh -huh. I don't tell anybody this, but I don't do any preparation. I um, won't tell anyone. You just told everyone, don't, though. Don't tell great. Chris at Word Lake, um, who gives me who a lot of Who is probably work. listening. <laughs> He's a big fan of the show. That uh, I actually don't. Uh, um, I, you're, you're meant to. But this is one of the things in acting school that they don't like. Like, you're not, there isn't a course in Drama Academy uh, mm -hmm. on audiobooks. Semester, no. audiobooks 101. Here's a semester. No, there's not. And then you go, okay, oh, how do I, great, I'd love to learn how to do audiobooks. You just kind of chucked in, and you have to fake it till you make it kind of thing. Uh, we talked about that before, too. 
Yeah. So did you like think about like what really like did you solidify what really makes it hard? Did you? Yeah, I'm it out? suffering under the yoke of it. Well, I think part of it is that <laughs> part of it is that um, you are when you do these things at home by yourself, you are a one man band, right? So oh, you've got to be audio engineer, and that's another thing you don't learn until you get down the road and you go. I guess I need to learn like about Hertz and uh, gigabots and megawits and all this well, stuff. Well, you're the perfect guy for that. You're the one always, you know, getting on me for not knowing it, which means you must know it. Right. Well, it must. It means I must. Obviously. Of course I do. I know everything uh, at this point. Yeah. I've, no, but you do have to learn it. Um, whereas if you go to a studio like you will do for your audio drama. Yeah, there's an engineer. There's a, there's a guy. Yeah. There's a guy or a lady. We don't want to be, but um, work in the boards and all that stuff. And, Human. and you can just perform. See, then you just focus on the performance. But so you have to do both. You have to do both. And it cuts into the performance. I've stopped doing some of the both because at first I was like, okay, I really don't want to send them a bunch of crap. I want it all nice and formatted. And then I, I slowly and then very quickly gave up on doing that. And now I've sent them just me in all my glory and you pick out the bits that you like from that. And I make see. them work. But um, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Let's see if that works out. So is this the first time that you've like been hired as both actor and engineer? No, no, I've done it before. I've, I've done audiobooks before at this home. This is like a whole and thought. This is like a, a large and especially large It's, it's just a little bit more difficult because some of the books are just, I want to I wanna be gentle here, um, trite. I want to say, <laughs> um, meaning look that word up. Yes, tell me oh, what you mean. Um, meaning easy, you know, uh, just your. Oh, okay. Your, you know, uh, a murder mystery, something, something simple. Lacking in freshness or effectiveness. Oh, you because quick. of constant use or excessive repetition. Right. Which right. is that? So because of that. Um, no, maybe I misused the word. Anyway, uh, the point is, is it's not a hundred and fifty-year-old Mark Twain speak, and with. A, a completely different use of the language and um, a lot of characters and things going on. It's it's just more simple. Gotcha. Easier to read with a narrative. Sometimes you get these books with a lot of characters. Anyway, why am I going into all of this, Jay? You tell me. I'm going to tell you. Because I'm, I'm actually quite excited. Okay. I wasn't as excited before. Now, but now, and then I got, now I got really excited. Your about our guest killing. i'm talking and my thing tank is like <laughs> oh a guest because of our yes. guest yes we have a guest today uh, a wonderful guest and what happened was i did an audiobook um mm -hmm. as as i do um it wasn't i hadn't done very many and um in this case i was meant to do it with someone else and i've done a couple like that where there are multiple characters within the book which mm -hmm. is maybe something similar to what you're doing but one person sort of narrates, but then it switches to the perspective of the POV of another character and they read their parts. Hmm. And so I did a gotcha. book recently. Um, she won't remember the name, but I remember it. I'm going to test her to see if she remembers the name. But um, oh, spicy. It, was, <laughs> it was a murder mystery. Yeah. Um, you know, easy, easy enough. And um, I shared it with her and we worked back and forth. She has the same agent that you and I both have in voice, by oh, cool. the by. Yeah. Um, and at some point, after kind of communicating with her and, and finishing the book, I saw a post online uh, somewhere in the socials by our agent or somebody that said, congratulations to, and I'm going to say our guest name now, <gasps> Kate Hanford. Woo! Woo! Okay. Too early for the... Uh, for ha, she, ha, who has recently completed, get this, Jay, uh -huh. 100 audiobooks. Wait, oh my gosh, wrap, really? Yeah, wrap, wrap your head around that, yeah. And I had completed Entire a grand total books. of, yeah, yeah, well, the whole book, the whole enchilada, cover to cover. Oh I, that's God. more books than I've read, like, in my whole life, much less as, like, a yeah, job. Yeah, that fits for you. 100? <laughs> 100 books. 100. And I, at that time, had completed almost four and a half. So I understood the <laughs> complexity and oh the gosh. difficulty. So I just thought, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. And that was, you know, it was before we started the podcast, but I thought at the time I said, I'm going to have her on. I want to talk yeah, to her. For I want to sure. know, right? You know what I mean? Like that's a prolific 
audiobook reader. And That's so cool. That is impressive. It's impressive. She's won an yes. award. I'll let her talk about all that. But in, in other words, this podcast and, and the whole offstage acting project, of course, is designed to help aspiring actors and working actors figure out, you know, this this thing we call drama. Um, and I need help myself. I'm not a, you know, I'm not so big that I can't admit Jay when I need help. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised. Uh, uh, it is surprising, I know. It is, yeah. I, I can't believe I'm hearing you say it, but all right. I don't need anybody's help. I didn't need your help. I don't need help from you or anybody. I need well, help. And I'm hoping, to, well, in, in general, I'm hoping to pick up some pro tips here. I think we Great. All, we're all going to learn a little something. Yeah, I have my pencil ready. <laughs> Good. You know it's being recorded, so you, you can always go back and... We record I know, and I'll do the show notes, so I'll listen to it again. We but, record you know, all I, I like the act of doing it. It's good. Actually, you're right. You know what? I should get a pen and a paper, too, because I need to... She probably curses like an, like an old fisherman. We'll and find better, out. We'll I'm find out. <laughs> but I need to mark those down. I'm going to get my pen and pad ready, too. Okay. So, now, here's the more exciting part. It okay. gets more exciting, if you can believe it. I, I Let's go. In doing my research, because I just was like... It was enough for me that, you know, Kate was... a. Uh, Hundred, is that like a centarian? What would you call a hundred in a hundred? A, um, a, a, a centennial libro. Lit, 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 yeah, cent, centiliterary, centiliterary vocalist. Center, yeah, centra literary. No, centra, anyway. centra literary vocalist. She'll come yeah, up with something right. better, I'm sure. Um, meaning that she's she's in the one hundred club. The three digits. Yeah, so it wasn't Whatever. just for that. There it also wasn't just, was. Well, no, because I, that's why that's why I booked her, if you will, um, or asked her to uh -huh. be part of the show, which she she graciously agreed to do. And then I started actually researching her more, and she's actually an actress, but like a crazy good actress. That I'm, which explains well, a lot. You're really leading up. I'm looking forward to this, Todd. You you're you you have gotten some banging guests. I'm not gonna lie. Like I've so far, we've been lucky, haven't we? We have. We really have. So I'm looking forward to this. Now check out the show reel, and then let's see. We'll just see how banging Kate is. <laughs> I miss that. Better. I gotta go back. Did you see the new show in London by Wilde? Marvelously witty. I loved it. A handbag. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new poor things, Jay. Yes. Better. Big deal. Why I keep it in my mouth if it is revolting? <laughs> I have said that before to Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Saucy. You. Catch my drift. Oh, uh, because oh, you mean his penis. Good oh. God, Bella. How would you be a father? He's very unwell. I fear he will not see the year out. Oh. How marvelous. How do they get the pastry so crisp? Mr. Grief, we're told you have special powers. I have a doctorate in criminology and a murder conviction. Inside man. <laughs> but you see things other people can't see. Did you persuade your mother to come here today? No one else is interested anymore. Yeah. I heard about you, Mr. Grief. I thought maybe you could help us. We just want to know where he is. Where did he go? Have you given any thought to the possibility that I might actually find your husband? Because after five years, he is almost certainly dead. Well, at least we would know. Yeah. Knowing would be something, be, be better than what we have at the moment. And what you have at the moment is hope. Hmm. Yeah. Hope. Hope's awful. Yep. Ladies, sick of putting a lemon top in your vag? The com catch you. We didn't see that coming, did you, Jay? <laughs> Try to catch him. Hey, 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 hey. I don't know what that's from, but I love it. <laughs> Girls who drink. They just don't, though, you know, guys. Like, I just feel like. Sorry. If you grab at him, woe betide you. Very sad with a cup of tea. Wide range. 
Comedy, drama. I lost British, my dog. North American. No, not not now. I mean, when I was a kid, I lost my dog on the beach. We used to go to the seaside every summer, me and my family back home, and um, collect pebbles and seashells, chase crabs, and swim too. Swim a lot. It's nice. What happened to your dog? Pavarotti. Your dog was called Pavarotti. <laughs> was he fat? Not at first. No, but he could sing opera. <laughs> That's me. Okay. And he dyed his hair. I think I'll take off boxing when I get home. <laughs> It'll be something new. I could punch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Audiences will have to watch this on YouTube to see all the silent dramatic acting of Kate Hanford. Beautifully done. Beautifully. What do you think of that, Jay? Woo! Woo! Let's bring her that's in. Lovely. Big cheer. Here she is. <laughs> oh, oh that's God. the wrong one. Small Hello. clap. That's one. <laughs> Kate Hanford, ladies and gentlemen. There Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for oh, this clap. I just... She's laughing. <laughs> There's nothing more exposing than watching people watch your show reel. Wow. Or watching people watch their own show reel, which I true. often, I like to watch that too. That's I go, true too. I can see yeah. the, the face like of that. them going, oh God. <laughs> so how do you feel when you see that? Uh, Proud. I mean, no, I mean, it's jokes, right? It's hilarious. I, uh, I love it. I mean, the transition from Inside Man into the Great is my favorite thing ever. And I'm glad... You the, also laughed. <laughs> yeah. It was well done. It was well, um, that's very cleverly put together. That yeah, moment. not by me, I must say. <laughs> oh, okay. Put together by uh, Bespoke Reels. Okay. A little okay. shout out there for those guys. Well, but yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's an important, uh, first of all, having a show reel is very important. And having all those clips, it's it seems like it's trivial, but... You gotta have that kind of body of work to show, especially these days. So yeah, and yeah. congratulations on poor things. Um, yeah, man. let's start yeah. with that. Let's start with poor <laughs> things. I watched a little bit last night. I got, I, I thought, oh, I gotta, I gotta do a little research here. I didn't uh -huh. get through the whole thing, but what, how do you feel about that one? I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm, I think it's an amazing film. I mean, I'm biased yeah. a bit by being in it, but I'm a huge fan of his work. Yorgos Lanthimos is the director, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Everybody in it is like my nice. heroes. Oh, they're, they're idols. I mean, yeah. They're amazing. So getting to do that was really special. And we shot it in 2021. So right. oh, a little while ago. ago. Yeah. Partly COVID. strike delayed, partly oh, COVID. Strike. Yeah. And then also uh, just, you know, post production. Post. Taking time. Yeah. yeah. Willem Dafoe. Did you get a little hang time with Willem? Oh, um, no hang with Willem Dafoe. Sadly, no. No. I wish I'd met him. I know, but uh, no, we didn't overlap. Right, just got to meet Mark Ruffalo, my hero, Emma is Stone, he, my is hero. He delightful. I've heard he's delightful. He's delightful. <laughs> yeah, he he's a like delight. He's so yeah. charming and wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Talk talk us through some of that because this is this is good now. We haven't really had this kind of conversation yet, and I want to. Let's do it. We, yeah, we let's do it. Um, <gasps> what's it like to? Get, uh, walk walk the if you could um mm. the kind of young aspiring actor who uh, is getting their their bearings and stuff and then not that that's you but you know you find yourself kind of on the set you've been working mm. a long time you, you know what you're doing but boom you're confronted with kind of the, the the superstar hero and you go uh and now you've got a big scene what what's that feel like what's that pressure yeah i mean i I think it can be 
it can be super intimidating, but very much depends on how they are and how they mm. welcome you. But also, you know, you can't control other people. You can't control how they will behave. So I think um, I, it was really amazing with Poor Things, actually, because we had quite a lot of, I mean, we're all in wigs and, yeah. um, well, no wigs, actually. That was a rule. No no wigs. Hair pieces. <laughs> we had okay. hair pieces. Okay, yeah. And, you know, big sleeves and but corsets very stylized. and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, so there's a lot of prep to do. So I got to meet them oh, beforehand. Oh, time in the chair. Exactly. So, I love exactly. that. Exactly. Time in the chair, hair and makeup is the best place to meet and get yeah. familiar and friendly with people, yeah. Exactly, and it kind of takes the sting out of it because of course right. meeting people that you know and recognize, you're always gonna be, especially when you're a big fan of their work, it's a bit like, oh man, it can I know be intimidating, yeah. your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've and watched every you're, film oh, you're in. your work you know? and I love you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this is what I'll say to young actors as well or those who haven't had that experience yet is that at the end of the day, what you discover is we're all actors. Mm -hmm. um, and they will treat you, especially if you, they know you're there, uh, you know, they've been in your position before, perhaps, uh, where they were getting p smaller parts and finding themselves in that same situation. And uh, generally, we're all part of one big community, one big family. So there's no... Yeah, absolutely. And that? I think that they also want to... I mean, we were, I mean, we were having that dinner scene all day, right? Yeah. You're sitting there eating, yeah. like pretending to eat spaghetti for hours. Yeah. And so you do realize that like everybody just is also there to be easy with each yeah. other and yeah, chat yeah, yeah. and do the scene well and make jokes and joke around and keep it light. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, like you say, Have nobody's uh, an alien from another planet. Everybody's just Yeah, yeah, yeah. There Except to for do the their crew. Best. The crew can stay away. They're not <laughs> people, so get away from me. I don't know that I agree, Todd, but uh... Well, I uh, you know. Don't you have some cables yeah, you tell to them. You pick tell up? Them. And... <laughs> no, I love I love the crew guys. I always try to hang with the crew, the the, the teamsters. So let's talk about the journey. Let's talk about the, the Kate Hanford journey. Oh wow! <laughs> I want to hear um, about it. Let's born, do it. You're Canadian. Let's start with that. I am. So before anybody thinks, oh great, an American, and then they get uh, disappointed, just to mitigate any disappointment later. Disappointment. I think it would. It can only be good news. To be Canadian, to in my find opinion. out. Yes, exactly, that... exactly. That's the, that's the point. They're like, yeah. when are we going to get a non-American? So we're, we're you're out. you're branching out, guys. This is a big really, move. We're it's really a big have, move. Big. We really have stepped out of the of the borders. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, You've moved north, and uh, and here we are. Yes, I am. I am Canadian. That's Canadian, true. and mm -hmm. we've we've interviewed a few um, North Americans who are, are in London. So mm -hmm. we we will be branching out from there as well. It's a uh, niche. It's a, it's, it's a. It is a niche. It's a rich seam. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, it's a. I don't know. We get a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, totally. Um, you're quite well educated. Dramatically, I am. That's true. So I, yeah, I did a a BA in Canada, um, which was a drama school. You know, like a mm -hmm. conservatory program. And then I came to London to do an MA at Central. That's a and, Bachelor's of Arts and a Master's of Arts. And then a Master's of Arts. Right. Yes, exactly. And uh, so did that. And that's a year course. And I've been here since Ever then. Since. You're another one of those clingers honors. Yep. How did you, who refused how did you to like leave. Central? I loved it. It was extremely special time. Mm. I just loved it. It was exactly what I wanted at the time. And I how landed in a class of amazing really quite amazing people we got along so well so cool. and i don't jay know went to a different school what school did you go to jay yeah i also got an ma i got i went to lambda oh nice uh, um but competing, competing schools it's it's not <laughs> um but so we'll fight lambda, the lambda tigers versus the <laughs> versus the <laughs> royal Central Center school of speech. speech and drama wildcats yeah. Wildcats. Yeah. um wildcats but, yeah mm, yeah definitely um, but like, oh wildcats I, I feel like a lot of you know, Todd and I talked about this, that probably a lot of people listening are like, whether or not they're going to go to school, right? Like mm. whether training is like even yeah. important to do or if it's worth it. So yeah. do you feel like it was like getting your MA, like going to Central was worth it? It was worth the money? Yeah, for me, the time. for me, 100%, absolutely. Um, but I don't think that it's necessarily what everybody should do either. 
You know what I mean? Mm. I don't think that it's like the way in mm. for everyone. I don't think it's the right solution yeah. for everybody. Or I mean, solution, I don't know if that's the right word even. No, but yeah, like yeah. the right path. Trajectory, the right path or the yeah, right yeah. route. I think I, I don't know. I liked school. I liked training. I liked the structure that it gave. Yeah. You get in the contacts. BA. You said you also were great people, yeah. so you you made some contacts. Yeah, friends. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had a really. It was. I don't know. It was just kind of like a. It was a very magical year. We kind of had a really special group in our so class, cool. and yeah. yeah, we're all still in touch and still friends and work yeah. together and you know. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's so cool. Yeah, uh, I know. Ten years ago as well. How yeah. wild. <laughs> and you still talk to them. I know. <laughs> Sorry I'm laughing, but like, wow. I know, I know. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. And actually uh, quite a few people who weren't from London, you know, who moved here and a couple other Americans and uh, yeah, they stayed as well. Not everybody, but some people did. I and, went to uh, my recently good. 30th anniversary for a university. Wow. Wow. I know it's really ridiculous i went to university when i was eight years old but um <laughs> obviously what I'm, yeah yeah um yeah. but i remember this because it was different I, I told people i'm going back home la i went to school in la and i said oh, mm -hmm. oh i'm going home for an anniversary for university and most mm -hmm. everybody's response was well i don't even know anybody i went to university for what are you, what are you talking right. about like high school maybe but university anniversary they didn't get it and I said, mm -hmm. I, I had this revelation where I understood and I said, no, this is different. This was theater. Yeah. yeah. So we spent four years just like living, eating, sleeping, hanging, working, performing, rehearsing mm -hmm. and all of it together with this group. Um, we're tight, you know, and we're tight 30 years later and we want to see each other. So it's not like yeah. we went to business school or I got an engineering degree and I don't know any, you know, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. No, it's so a totally different engineers. thing. I'm sure there's engineers out <laughs> Nothing there that have against, made I'm, lifelong friends. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. there are plenty I mean, of engineers here. Yeah. I talked to people that I, I've met a few people recently who went to the same, un, like did the same, were at doing undergrad at the same time as me yeah. at the university I was at who, you know, were like, oh man, I didn't meet anybody. I made no, you know, I couldn't connect with anyone doing my course or whatever. And yeah. meanwhile, we're over in the theater building, kind of yeah. like a lunatic yeah, a bunch of clowns yeah you know yeah <laughs> nothing and but we fun. yeah nothing but fun well yeah, i mean yeah. well, well even the, the even the, the terrible stuff is fun, even when right? it was awful it was yeah, fun, <laughs> it was fun <'cause laughs> yeah. you're smoking and drinking and fighting and cussing having a great time and having a good yeah. time and then you throw a show together and it's awesome and you're just like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's it is pretty good when did kate know that kate i'm gonna keep saying it, that she wanted to be Let's an actor it. Oh man, I knew when? you were going to ask me this. I don't know, man. I think you don't know. <sighs> I've Certainly got, by the I mean, time I've got, you okay, went to university. I've got yeah, by the time No, the thing is, I never there was never no other degree. There was no other like thing that I was thinking about pursuing and then did pursue, you know, like none of that ever um it was there was no other thing I wanted to do in university or other thing I was ever going to do other than go to drama school. Mhm. Mm Okay. And did I you do don't, stuff in high school? I did stuff in high school. I did stuff in elementary school. I came back from I was away from my school for six months when I was nine years old. My dad went on a sabbatical. I lived in Argentina for six months. This is the full story. You're getting the okay. whole thing. Yeah, there we go. Came oh. back and my school was doing Pirates of Penzance. Nice. And they were like, Oh, we're almost ready to do the show. <laughs> we need a part for Kate, what are we going to do with her? Right. So they just like put, gave me a striped shirt and they're like, be pirate. a pirate. Right. Yeah. And me and my friend Graham, just my like Graham and I. My, yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> correct. Don't, 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 we, let uh, we <laughs> made up this whole, like, I mean, we didn't have anything to say. We weren't like, you know, right. we didn't do anything. We didn't, we weren't even no, in any nothing of the official, songs. Nothing official, right. No official. But we like, we got all of these props and we did this whole <laughs> thing in the back. You know, we were probably super annoying, but we just like had the best time. And I love that. I love that. In my too. mind, in the mythology, that. that's yeah. like, oh, that's the origin story. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to tell you another, another parallel. I did Pirates and Penzance in university. I was the sergeant. 
when the foeman bears his steel, tarantara, tarantara. Uh And we were the cops and, and they essentially ignored us. And we had all these, we had, we had songs, we had scenes and they were just ignoring us. They were focusing on the pirates and the pirate princess. If you don't know the show, it's uh, uh, Gilbert and Sullivan. It's a musical. It's, 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 it's British. It's great. I am the very modern of a modern general, whatever. That's the check one. out the sh- check out the show. There's a great movie. Kevin Klein plays the lead pirate. Anyway, um, they left us alone, and I grabbed all the guys, and we got in the room, and there was I don't know ten or twelve of us, and we created our own dance moves and everything, and we were the we were the hit of the show. <laughs> I must say, I've got that on video somewhere. Anyway, but uh, I That's think amazing. if you could do it with any show, you can do it with pirates. You just oh yeah somewhere you just clamber around in the back. But so anyway, that's when Kate said. I mean, I'm, I'm in yeah, love. You that was love. probably like the the beginning of it. I did a lot of um, I went and did all of these Shakespeare summer schools. I grew up in Stratford, Ontario, which has a big, huge Shakespeare festival. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Has since the 50s. And so that was around. And there was this amazing program. It's still running, I think, in the summer where called Shakespeare School. And you'd go for a week or two weeks and you'd do workshops and put on a show at the end and stuff. So I did that all the way through high school. Mm, and nice. was like, cool, Shakespeare's the best. Let's Our go. Our producer just boy Andy just this. blushed a little bit because he's from Stratford. He's from that area too, yeah. Really? I didn't tell you that yet. Oh my God, that's the kind of intel we need. Yeah, it's the well, best. Don't, you don't need Perth County. We're really tight, you know? We know everybody down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. So the the that's pretty cool that you got to. Is, is it stum, summer stock sort of? Was that the that one? No, school. it was more like yeah. It was like, like a, a camp, program like a, for. It was like yeah. It was like summer camp if you're into Shakespeare. Right. Okay. Love which it. was my for vibe. Ner- basically the nerds. The, the yeah, it was the Shakespeare nerd school. The pig nerd and school. Yeah. That was what it was actually called. Yeah. It's <laughs> Shakespeare West. nerd school. It was the Shakespeare nerd school. Nerd camp. Summer yeah. Shakespeare nerd camp. Yeah, but I do think. I do think what it gave, because there were a lot of actors from the festival who would come and talk to us and do workshops with us and stuff. And actually, I think more than anything, it was really useful to see working act, like when you're 14 or 15 and you're like, I Mm. love this thing, but I had no reference for uh, that being a viable career. And then all these people come in and you're like, oh, people do 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 that. That's cool. And um, Mm. so I think that is very cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so see, this is why we go into these deep, deep background. Yeah, because that's 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 what builds an actor. I think at the end of the day, you know, some people just step in, you know, out of the blue. But most of us got to be built up from the ground, from top, from bottom up. I don't know where from I'm going top, with that. Top up. From top, from top up. Top, top you got to start from yeah. top, and then you get ground down into dust, and then you get built back up. And yeah. Um, anyway. That's the acumen approach. That's another okay. approach. Yeah. That's <laughs> also available. Wait, I have a random question. What's your favorite Shakespeare play? Oh. Hmm. Good question, Jay. Good question. I should be asking play, play, questions like that. Play is like that. I'm a, I'm a bit of a Shakespeare nerd. So like I- You know what? I, I love Shakespeare. What really did do. you play? Did you play? I have a like Puck. I picture you as Puck or something like really? that. Really? Like, I've never like, yeah, played just, Puck. That would no? be so fun. Oh, I no. see. Ariel. No, Ariel I never have. Do you know what? Or, I actually, I don't know nymph. if this is- my favorite, some nymph. Some wood nymph. That's some nice. Nymph. Let's do that. Let's cast her. Let's cast her some nymph. She played. Let's her showreel had like six too. different nymphs in it. They were all nymphs. Yeah, they're all nymphs. Definitely. <laughs> just stick some twigs in their hair. Or Fairy, something. Yeah, some <laughs> wings. Stick, twig sort of, her. <laughs> stick twigs in her hair. <laughs> Boom! Instant nymph. Instant nymph. Okay, so um, what did you play? Okay, I don't know if it's my favorite. Okay. Um, but. I've done As You Like It a bunch, uh-huh. and I really love it a lot. And I did it while we were at Central, and I played Silvius, okay. and it was the best time ever. I loved it. So I love say, him. He's such a as sweet- As you love it? As you love it. Like, he's such a you... sweet little dork. Like he's, you know, he's yeah. just trying to figure his stuff out and he really, you know, you're like, does he even love Phoebe? Does he even know anything? That's anyway, kind of a nymph, he, like he. That's I mean, he's a no, he's like a dog. He's like a Labrador. He retriever. is like, like annoying a dog. dog. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's better. Yeah, he is like a sweet, loyal hound. Yeah, that's funny. When the first my first introduction to him, the the guy who did it, who I was such a good actor, I found him so annoying, and not in a bad way. It made me like I he thought Sylvia mm. was so annoying. Oh my god, he's unbearable. He's completely he's unbearable. unbearable, but like not in himself, you know. 
he's going around like I'm the best. Right. <laughs> Why doesn't everyone? Say no, the more annoying it? he's played, the better. The better. Yeah. 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 Which is great. Yeah. The better portrayal. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So, how many times have you done it? Would you say you said a bunch? I actually three times, and always like so. We did it in. Uh, a it's a lot. I did it in undergrad, and I played okay. Celia. Always and the then we okay. did it in. I uh, did it in at Central, and I was Sylvius. And then the year after I graduated, did it again, in which I was wow. Charles the Wrestler, <laughs> and <laughs> and someone else. I'd just done this stage combat course, and I was like, "Yes, this is you great." Into, we had a yeah. wild <laughs> wrestling scene. Yeah, you could have probably played all the parts by then. By then, you yeah, it's play by heart. Do you play boys a lot? Kinda. Actually, yeah. yeah. I do went, I think I. Well? Do you do boy, boy, voices? I don't, not my, I mean, outside of books, not really, actually. Because I don't, yeah. I have not really ever done much. Um, I haven't done much animation or right. that kind of stuff where you'd be doing like the voice of this character, you know? I could see you playing, yeah, young Shakespearean boys. I do, yeah. I was like young boys or old women. That was all I was doing in drama school. That was it. Not the no ingenue, one was my age. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I don't know what was going on, but I even had long hair then. I don't know what right. was happening, but whatever. Yeah. You look a little more boyish, boyish now, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. And now you're busy, you know, you're not doing all those things because you're busy doing a hundred plus audiobooks. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So oh. let's go, let's move into this world. Now you've, you've graduated, you, you're in London. Mm -hmm. You start, how do you start audio work? Where, where did that begin? That was, again, I didn't really expect to have so many like anecdotal, like cute little stories, but this is you real. Didn't. Have you been I listening know. to our podcast? Well, we yes, do. but no, 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 as in, I thought like, you know, you ask someone that I'd be like, oh, well, I wrote to this agent. That's not what happened. Like a weird thing oh, happened I see. in Stoke I see on Trent and ah. that's how I got into audio. Ah, yes, great. I'll tell you. We love the, the story. Okay. Okay. okay, cool. So went to Stoke on Trent year after we just graduated, so it's like twenty. Which is? Can you explain that for the audience? Or so. When you say where Stoke on Trent is, or where, when you say you went there, you went to the town. I went to the town. Yeah. Okay. To see a friend from my drama school class in her first job okay. out of drama school. So we've just, you know, we've graduated. We're starting to work. She was doing this show, and I went up there and bumped into, like, met this guy in the cafe. I was there with my partner and we were like, you know, if you get chatting to this guy who's obviously also going to the theater. Yeah. And after, you know, sort of tr transpires that this guy is a voice agent and he had been told, oh. you know, go, go see this show. You're in the area anyway. Maybe you can pick up some new people. Yeah. And okay. uh, so we got chatting and he's like, oh, you aren't from here. <laughs> Have you got a voice agent? Have you thought about voice work? Okay. And at that point I hadn't, occurred to me at all. I didn't know anything about it. I was like, well, I don't know, I guess that'd be cool. But I don't know, you know, I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. And uh, he was like, well, you know, why don't you send me, you know, like make a little reel, just could be just on your phone, send me some stuff. And uh, maybe I won't sign you or anything, but I'll like submit you for some things and we'll see if we can kind of mm -hmm. get you some work. Yeah. So it was really kind of chance thing wow fortuitous weird i know like in a cafe Stoke on, Stoke on trent i know was that neil i know that was actually not neil that okay. was my first first, first agent day. neil okay. i uh i can't now remember how many years you bumped into him neil. somewhere else i bumped into him somewhere else <laughs> went back to stoke on trent <laughs> yeah, yeah, and neil i need a new there. agent i, went, I was uh, like i'm like show up. i started going I, to a lot more theater <laughs> yeah i need to I... change things up and uh <laughs> So yeah. how, so when you first started, you you kind of started getting a little bit of work. Mm -hmm. it, it, what what was your first job? Do you remember? The very first thing I think was some ELT, mm -hmm. like English English language, language training. training. That's what yeah. that stands for, right? Yeah. Um, so it was a little bit of that, and then I got my first book in I don't know maybe twenty sixteen, like a couple of years. It wasn't sort of the first thing I did was a book. Yeah. It was like. I really wanted to do it, but it took a little bit to yeah. get that happening. I was testing for them and like not getting them and not getting them. And mm. then finally got one. And then I think like anything, like once you're kind of on the 
train. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do you one, can, and people are deliver, like, "Oh, that's okay." Yeah, if you deliver, she didn't ruin that. Let's <laughs> let's ice. Yeah, right. <laughs> not awful, not god awful. <laughs> I think sometimes attitude. the quality they don't. <laughs> it's not. She did ruin it. <laughs> I want to isolate that though a little bit because now we're getting into some nuance here. Because because you're prolific now, I want to go back to those kind of mm. early days. How. How difficult was it for you or what was the process you went through where you, where you, you know, you get the book and you realize, okay, mm -hmm. now I got to do this thing. Yeah. Um, I got really great advice and help from mm. my uh, agent at the time and then some other people around me who had sort of done a book mm -hmm. who gave me some great sort of the, like the sort of crash course of like, these are the practical things you need. Right. in order to do this um Where and such a, i'll yeah. tell you they were get an <laughs> ipad please. yeah okay get an right. iPad. write that get down an everybody. IPad. get an ipad write it down get an ipad get the um notes. get I the am. app i annotate right oh i i yep i've heard this yeah okay which you know, it's a little glitchy, but I still use it so you what know. does it do just for the so it is like a pdf reader yeah. on here that you're opening on your iPad and it lets you highlight um, with all loads of different colors. You can write, you can, you know, it's just like right. a way to mark up a PDF. But what's great about it is you can use all of these different colors. And I was given the pro tip, which I still do, of highlighting each character's mm. dialogue mm. in a different color, which Good. is a game changer. That's, that's really... Good. Useful. Nobody told me this. Nobody told me well, this. Well, I'm telling you now, Todd. I'm struggling. I'm just going to go. <laughs> yeah. I got it was such a good tip. That's so smart. That's so smart. It's really helpful. Yeah. yeah. It's, good. yeah, you yeah. Got to, it's yeah. It, it's really helpful. Also, I mean, partly for your brain, it's amazing how quickly you remember as well. You're like, oh, yeah, green. It's this guy. You know, like you just, mm. you remember. It's and then also, yeah, exactly. And then as you're reading, it weirdly does this thing at least for me, it sort of changes it into a script. Oh yeah. In a funny way. So when you're reading it, you're not sort of, I don't know, it's a little bit less like big blocks of text. It visually breaks it up, right. which mm -hmm. is really useful, I think, for anybody reading, you know, useful for your eye to break it up. But also then you're like, oh, now this has become a scene between these three characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than a book you're reading. And if that switching. Makes sense. So do Jay, you like Jay has a question? Go for it. Do you like only highlight? Thank you, Todd. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> do you only Thanks. highlight like your the character's dialogue, or do you even like highlight the you know the narration, right? Like the book text. Mm, I see. I only highlight the dialogue. The dialogue. And I leave the narration just as like right as blank. is blank. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. perfect sense. That's I yeah. think I do the same. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. So that, this is now we're talking about 2016 when you first kind of started? Yeah, around there. Okay. 16, so 17, like eight, around that. Eight years ago at this oh point. Oh, my God. I know. Oh and God. when did it start to just like accelerate? So you, you like kind of, you probably trickled mm -hmm. in, you got one or two a year, maybe three or four, mm -hmm. and then all of a yeah. sudden. It sort of started to slowly build up and then fortuitously, it mm -hmm. there was enough of it by the time COVID hit, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that I wasn't sort of because uh, right. my I had been working for since I graduated in a theater box office as right. a casual flexible job, yeah. and then was sort of doing the voiceover as well, and then I might leave and do a play and come back or whatever, and the that casual work like everything, COVID happened and all the yeah. theaters closed, so that suddenly Dried was up. gone. And um, luckily, by then, there was enough voiceover, which was mostly audiobook yeah. stuff, that it was fine. And then I was like, oh, maybe this is my job now. That's cool. And <laughs> it did sort of become your job, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I set up a, you know, I mean, like we all did yeah. set up a studio at home, and that made that possible. And then. Is that comfortable? Are you comfortable with that then? Uh, which? It's a bread and butter. I mean, I call the it a bread, bread and like butter the... job. The the audio books. And when people ask, mm. like, okay, oh, audio books. I mean, some people I think they think it's cool to some degree, mm -hmm. and you kind of you agree, yeah, yeah. 
Um, but at the same time, you go, well, it doesn't pay as well as the other jobs, um, mm. but it's steady. And you work mm. from home in your PJs, mm. and, you know, and at your leisure, yeah. sort of, you know, there's no boss. You don't have a manager over you. You just have a bit of a deadline. Mm -hmm. But it can be, I find, again, don't tell any of my clients this, but it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> You're just... We I, won't I just, tell I them. I can't stand it. We, just, we won't. Just, ugh, I really, ugh. Do you but feel the I, same way? I'm grateful that I have the work. So please, I love <laughs> doing the audiobooks, but between uh, you and me, it's just a nightmare. Do you agree? <laughs> Do you agree? Wow, you're really selling yourself there. I um, I've, I've knocked myself out of contention <laughs> for any more work. That's Jay and cool. I will do all of your books. Now Jay can now. step in. Um, do you know what? I it's been a whole thing. Like so, I always love doing them, and I don't say that. I'm not just saying it. I really okay. mean it. I love doing them. What do you love about it? I love reading aloud. Hmm. Anything. Like if I'm reading a book by myself, like the in back the of a shampoo room, bottle, and I will read it out loud. in the supermarket. Like, yeah, I read stuff. About, I really oh gosh, the menu. Today. Do you like read the I'm menu in it. a restaurant? Like Reuben sandwich. <laughs> no, um, with sauerkraut. Oh, okay, you don't. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not that guy. <laughs> Maybe I should be. Maybe that's. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I just want to. That's the next step. I want to clarify where how far we go with the reading out loud bit. <laughs> it's just. It just keeps escalating. No, I really, I really, really love reading stories out loud. I always yeah. think okay. I, I always have. So I find it really satisfying to do it. Um, Good. Really enjoyable. Sometimes, you know, you know, like there's a lot of prep and sometimes the prep you have to fit in and it's a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, How do you prep? Especially, well, I, so I used to, it would be like, by the time I was reading it aloud, it was like the third time I was reading the book because I would right read the book wow. i mean yeah, you know read the book. by read and you know Peruse. like you're yeah. you're reading it Glean with a degree it. of swiftness right you don't really over. have time yeah. to like yeah but i would really? use i used to like read it and then i'd go back and then i'd do my highlighting which is Break essentially it reading it again yeah and then i would record it yeah so it would be saves time recording in the uh, ultimately yeah i mean it does make you more you know, you're smoother and more efficient. But then, I mean, with anything, you do it more and more, and then you get faster. Sure. At at everything. All of that stuff. Yeah. So right. now I do the high, like it's sort of a two pass thing. Like I do the highlighting as I read it the first time. Yeah. Okay. And I try. I actually now try not to read it too closely, because Oops. then yeah. it's more enjoyable, and I think maybe more. I don't know. A bit more zesty. Surprising. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you actually get to record it. Yeah, you get to like hear your reactions, right? Like you kind yeah. of get to live it and be like, oh my gosh, this is happening. And the re the listener gets to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, you want to. Like, oh my God, I didn't realize the butler did it. <laughs> well, Are you guys yeah, listening but... to this? I know. Have you? <laughs> Am I the only Have one? Have you read wasn't... this? <laughs> 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 Am I the no, only I, one? I would be that guy. That's... Uh, I'm totally would. surprised. I thought for sure that it yeah. was going to be the limo driver, but geez. Yeah. This is actually a pretty good book. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll get back to reading now. Anyway, the limo driver came out of the house. Now, do you punch and roll? And by the way, folks, uh, punch and roll. Do you want to explain what that's that is? That's not a. <laughs> that's not a euphemism. Hey, baby, do you do you punch and roll? All right, you, Todd. What you get, <laughs> I don't know what that would mean. Do you, I don't know either, but it just sounds like something <laughs> a creepy guy in a bar would say. It does. Yeah. Do you do you punch and roll? Um, it's Wait, actually so also a boxing term. Punch and roll. But in audio work, punch and roll is, shall I explain it? Who's going to explain it? You go for Not it. Me. You're on I a roll. I don't have a clue. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> you do it's, know. It's when, you, uh, when, you, when you're when you reading and you, and you flub the line and then uh, within the audio uh, software, you go back uh, kind of automatically and you play a little bit of the bit where you just were and then you come right in and you finish the line and yeah. fix the flub. Um, and you, so it's punch in and roll out. As opposed to fluff and repeat, which is the other option. Right. That's probably what I do. I do both. What is fluff so and fluff repeat? And, so fluff and repeat that. is where you hey, baby, make your mistake. Do you, oh. <laughs> do you uh -huh. fluff and repeat? You, like you a make- laundry, <laughs> Like a creep in a laundry room. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> 
it's the creep in the bar versus the creep in the laundry, in the room. laundry room. Like I, out, trying to out creep each other. Yeah. The so the the laundry room creep, the fluff and repeat option is you make your mistake and uh you just take a breath, sort of reset, and then okay. you, you just you just start again. From That's the what I was that talking sentence. to Jay about. I didn't realize it at a term. That's what I started to do. I used to punch and roll. Now I'm mm -hmm. fluffing and repeating for yeah. this book specifically. Okay, so that's a thing. So yeah, oh, that is. I a feel thing. vindicated a little bit by that. Thank you. All I'd right. say. So what do you yeah, do? Yeah, I do both right. when I'm recording at home. Um, I mean, if I go into studio, I just do what they usually do, which yeah. I find sure. is usually punch and roll. Yeah, yeah. The guy's pretty cool. Most of the time. The the engineer. Yeah, yeah. Um. They just Although, punch you in, it's know. in your headphones and you just, you hear it. Yeah. And it's almost like you don't even, you're saying it, but without- You can almost, yeah. You can also like say it along with yourself, right. kind of like what you can hear. And then you take the breath at the right time and stuff. And you, yeah. And then you jump like, right in. Yeah. And it doesn't feel even, like a it's flawless. surfer. Yeah. It's cool. A vocal surfer. A vocal surfer. <laughs> That's also on the t-shirt. Um, the, yeah, I think at home I do- fluff and repeat because I don't, I mean, I don't really to stop edit yourself my own stuff. and to go, yeah. And then to stop yeah. and cut back and it, and it ruins the flow. Yeah. Especially if you have a lot of characters and things and all of, and, and the energy drops. Also logistically, my, yeah. um, I think I was You're telling like you a while thing. ago, yeah. my, my little home setup is in a literal in closet. It's in a closet. Yeah. And so there isn't any space. So my computer actually sits outside in the hallway. Oh. And oh, I nice. sit in there without my computer because it's loud. Okay. And then wow. I'll do my recording. So then if I make a mistake, I clap to mark the mistake okay. in the waveform. And yep. then I can either edit it or not. And most of the time. Oh, so then you might, even, you might even go back and edit then later yourself. Yeah. They got it. I mean, when we submit the things, there is an engineer and I think they're pretty fast and they can just grab the stuff. Yeah. I mean, and also they're going to be better at editing than me. Right. I don't know. You know, yeah, I've learned a bit not. about it, but I don't know. I'm not a pro by any means. I think I was nervous initially when I first started getting them that I wanted to like sub submit quality. I didn't want them to know that I flubbed lines. Oh, right. <laughs> This is my my arrogance, my <laughs> ego, where I was like, they are gonna think that this guy is flawless. And I won't, there's not a single mistake included. And I think that's where they're like, oh my God, this is great. We don't have to do anything. So they would come back and go, so Todd, we have like two pickups out of an yeah. 8,000 page book. And I would go, that's right. But it took me a month and a half. <laughs> no. That's brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. So I kind of quickly, I gave up on that whole scenario. Um, yeah. eventually, but I, I no. wanted, I got the audio books coming in and <laughs> it's relatively new for me. And I didn't, I wanted them to kind of keep coming cause it's, I didn't even start, I don't think till post COVID myself. So mm. as you said, it, it is a, it is bread and butter. It's a bit of a niche. It's, it's lucrative in a sense, um, and sought after. So mm -hmm. once, once I got a, a few in, I was like, okay, I want to, I want to keep this train rolling. Now it's rolling at a pretty good clip and I'm trying to jump off, but I can't find any soft. <laughs> You're trying to disengage. I You're like, get me to, out. Like, I say, like, I can't do this anymore. I have to get up out of this chair. Yeah. I can't imagine you're stuck in that closet. It's long. Well, I don't record at home that often. I do books. Oh, okay. I do books at home every now and then. Mostly I go in studio, who, who which is clients? great. Can, can I ask? Can you prepared this? Uh, I think you mentioned You mean pub, like publisher wise? Yeah, yeah. Like who? who's booking um, Kate Hanford? I'd say um, I do a lot. Penguin? I've done a lot lately for Penguin and for mm. Macmillan. Okay. Um, and some of the Macmillan stuff, they've got a big office in New York. So I think a lot of stuff, I mean, so do most of these big publishers, but Macmillan audio is, um, a lot of their, like, there's a lot of American work, um, right. from Voices, them, which is great want, Voices. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they want that sound. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, they do it. Those two here. Bloomsbury, I just did one for Bloomsbury. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do it's you have those a favorite guys. book you've read? Like you've recorded? I, a style like what do you prefer 
Well, you know what? It's kind of it's been it's kind of morphing recently. So at the beginning for a while, I mean, and I still do a lot of these series. I was like detectives in the Midwest. Oh, that was cool. my really uh-huh. that was my jam. And it still is. And I still I have a series about a detective called Josie Quinn, which I've been doing since the beginning of you when I You sound like a Josie Quinn. Wow. You really She's sound like a Josie Quinn. I love Josie Quinn. It does, it does sound like a perfect. I can. She's like, everybody. The name, you sound like Josie Quinn. Your voice is, sounds like Josie Quinn. Absolutely. Well, you know, I kind of am Josie Quinn. <laughs> she wow. she is point. Josie Quinn. Yeah. She's the best. We're on book 18, 19, 20, wow. something like that in that series. Wow. Um, so that was sort of, and I've had a few detective series, you know, like that or like one-off books. And it would be so, yeah, it was like female detective or FBI agent or something similar Yeah. Cool. in, you know, Pennsylvania, somewhere in the Midwest. Um, not that Pennsylvania is the Midwest, but I you know what I mean. I ask you something, yeah. but not without <clears throat> delicately. Okay. Um, I'm nervous. <laughs> um, do you punch and fluff? No. Um, <gasps> I don't know what that even means. Ew. Fine. <laughs> financial stuff without mm-hmm. going into great detail but uh, it, it, when 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 we say a hundred books people might get the false impression that you are rolling in it rolling um, in cat <laughs> yeah but she, man, she must be raking it in but now not to not to cry poor either but so somewhere on the spectrum would you say mm. like doing that much work and having that kind of prolific but you know where does that put you yeah like Realistically, yeah. what are we talking about here? No, basically, I mean, I think you said earlier, it's not audiobooks, I'd say. They pay the my, bills. They, they pay the bills. They're not, um, as you mentioned, they're not like the most um, lucrative, lucrative of like the most highly paid audio yeah. work you could be doing. I think it's kind of similar with acting stuff too. Like, if, you know that if you get a commercial, suddenly yeah, you're like, bio. oh, okay, that's yeah. like. What I got money. paid last year, you know, I mean, yeah. not necessarily, but it could, I think the the potential is much higher. I'd say what audiobooks, what is really positive about them is that they are really predictable in the yeah. sense that once you've built up a, um, I don't know, Repertoire. like a base yeah. of who you work Josie with Quinn. and what you're doing. Josie Quinn. 19 yeah. books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They kind you get, of, you, get you know, your own character. and you, and you can, you can anticipate, like, you know what you're going to you know what you're going to get paid. So you know kind of then you're like, okay, well, if I do this many books in a month, then this is sort of what my salary is in quotes because yeah. we don't really – I don't actually know what it's like to get a salary. But you know what I mean. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. a more oh, predictable way. So, it's a more yeah. predictable way of earning money. Because the agent experience. or the client will come to you early and say, okay, we have all these contracts. They want you to yeah. do this many books. So you kind of yeah. know, even for the whole year, like I know right now I have, I think four more books for the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can, you can kind of get ahead and you can calculate and say, oh yeah, well, look, if you yeah. do 20 books a year, at yeah, $45 a pop, then you know that you'll be making 900, 200, $217 <laughs> this year. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can kind of like, I guess it's a, I don't know, I've found voiceover generally is a little bit like, it's, it, some, yeah. some of it's still going to come out of left field, of course. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes you might just suddenly they're like, do you want to do for, I don't know, a week's yeah. work on this video game? Right. And that is do unanticipated. I? Like, do, yes, please. They, ask, they ask, do you want, would you be interested in making money doing acting? Do you like, hmm? do you want to? Um, I don't Cause know. Cause you can, like yeah. if you want. Uh, let me check my schedule. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting, you're saying it's, it's like stable. It's, stable. it's more, it might I be think the it's only more comparatively stable. Apart from maybe getting a, like a, a series regular on a television show and having a sure. contract like that. Uh, maybe it might that's be the most the, stable. Like, yeah. Maybe that's sort of like, similar but it might be the most stable of especially in voice because mm-hmm. or it, uh, if you're if you're an animated character on a series it's going like if you're doing a, yeah one of the octonauts or something i don't know but uh, yeah Thomas but then the tank and then there's the drama right like with tv shows there's the drama about yeah it's stable but like are they going to write your character yeah. in next season 
Well, yeah. Or are they going to buy the yeah. season again? There's there's a lot of that. Are yeah. Get, will it get renewed for another renewed? season? Or yeah. 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 So really, like, I guess the real thing is no acting work is stable. Sounds like, or just get a four year <laughs> musical theater contract. Yeah, where basically. you go on tour? Acting yeah. is yeah. unstable. That if there's a takeaway from this whole acting, is unstable. Should unless you're Kate Hanford. Name. Offstage acting, unstable acting. Uh, uh, unstable unstable acting. acting. Welcome back to the Unstable Acting Podcast. <laughs> Where you're, everyone's a bit unstable. You're everyone, you're everyone is hungry podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell us about your award, your big fancy shiny. My big fancy shiny award. You got an earphones. You got I an did earphones get an earphones award. award. I did. Are you wearing them For, now? Is that, the, is that the ones you're wearing? I'm, this, is, this is them. <laughs> yeah. Um, Are you on the Sony? Are you on the Sony like myself? Do you know what? I am. And I just got them, guys. You got them? Yeah. With the, with the just curly, like you this also is, recommend. The curly this is the yeah. first That's, time. I got the same ones. This is the first time. Look at that. Show wow. Look, it's the first time I'm using them. They're amazing. Is it? I am. Um, no bleed. No bleed. No bleed. They're so comfortable as well. I um, super comfortable, and they're reasonably I've given dressed. myself like a. Follow the wow, link Sony, on Amazon. Oh, and, Sony uh, is really getting a shout out. <laughs> Sony, this is the purchase, second time. Purchase this through, is through the our time. affiliate I'm link. Get really? them now. Purchase yeah, the I'd Amazon. Really recommend them. Wait a minute, I'm trying I to really do a plug. Would. I'm trying to make a little money here for us. Use the affiliate link in our show notes <laughs> to purchase the Sony. I forgot the name of them, but you'll find. Come and on. then I get we get a small commission here at Offstage. And anyway, okay. Yeah, they're great. I'm I love them. that stuff. They are great. Yeah, and I saw. I tell you what. Um, I did a lot of research, and I was looking mm -hmm. for a no bleed because I was getting bleed through even on the podcast. Because mm -hmm. what happens is normally, uh, I'm not hearing anybody else when I'm doing audiobooks or recording audio. Yeah. There's nobody to to bleed into my microphone. But here, there's bleed, so it didn't matter before. I just had these crappy ones, but mm -hmm. now, um, and then I there's this kind of guru guy that I watch. And, I bought the headphones and then I watched some video on him where he was talking about some tech stuff that, on YouTube, you know, and he was wearing them. And I thought, oh, if he, if he's wearing them, then I made the They're right great. choice. They They're had great. them at a studio I was working at and I, really? I, I used them for a book. I was like, what are these? I want them. Yeah, yeah. Is it, wait, is it the MDR7506 or is it the oh, Sony ADK? <laughs> we both have to look. MDR seven five zero six. Yeah. Is that okay. What you it is that. Yeah. It is that. One. Yeah. Yeah. Seven right, five zero six. Reasonably priced. I got. Them. I think I got mine. Yeah. I bought them. Pounds. I bought them used on eBay, guys. Nice. That's the best mm -hmm. way to do. Best way. Yep. Some greasy head had. Oh, once on I get. This. Once I get that that commercial cash. How so used like, were they? Ew. Was it like earwax? Well, they've they've been had disinfected. Were they fluffed? Were they fluffed and repeated? Fluffed or repeated? <laughs> yeah. Oh goodness. Can I tell you a little story about what happened to me? I just I, I want to bring it up because now is the time. And I'm gonna I want to take a little time out of your time, if you guys don't mind. Let's do it. Maybe Kate can help me. I did a I did a series of audiobooks um called Breed the Breed Thrillers, right? And um there was four of them. One was another guy who I won't name, but then they had an, uh, a casting or whatever, the audition. I, I did a reading and I got three of these Breed Theater. Not a great book, but still fine. And it was my first kind of like, okay. And the character was Breed and it was kind of like a like a Jason Bourne kind of military guy. And he, he went all over the place in these different books, you know, Afghanistan and Philippines. Mm -hmm. And he's running around the world, <clears throat> saving the world and all this. Quack. Oh, excuse me. Quack. Um, and... I thought I was doing a bang up job and I was getting a lot of good feedback from the client. They were like, oh yeah, you're great. This is great. Now you're on our books and you know, we're going to start using you and stuff. I was like, okay, cool. Then the reviews came out and I was getting hacked away on reviews. And my partner, Justina, seems to think, and I kind of make sense that the guy, cause my, our agent knows the guy as well. And, I think the guy, who isn't technically even really a voice actor, got upset, and now he's done the fourth one. I did the, I, he did the first one, I did three in the middle, and then he did the fourth one, and everybody was complaining about the narrator in these books that nobody even, I don't even think anybody listened to, and they gave a bunch of bad reviews, and they actually, they said my name in the reviews, like, Todd Kramer, the reader, is terrible, and oh. we can't listen to this. 
Oh, and man. she thinks that he got that he got some of his friends in there to make some bad reviews. Because I've never even seen anybody review the reader. Is this like on Audible reviews? Yeah, yeah. It's mm. a, you can go into Amazon and mm -hmm. look at my and then and then there's like one review for each book. Three yeah. different people, or, or I don't know, a couple of reviews for each person. Everybody's going to look now. Uh, audiences, please do me a favor. Go in. <laughs> if you have an Audible account, go to the Breed Thrillers, Todd Kramer, and put in positive reviews. Five Even stars. Even if you've never heard it. Five stars and really play up how much you love Todd Kramer, the reader. And let's get back. Let's get back. Justice. Let's see justice <laughs> served in the audiobook community. <laughs> but does that make sense? Could that, could that, do you think that, do you get reviews? Everybody gets reviews. Yeah. I was crushed. Like, I don't yeah. get reviews. I don't get bad reviews. I don't get I any mean, reviews. But no reviews are better than bad reviews. Oh, they can be weird, though. I know. It can so, be weird. Have you seen reviews about yourself? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, all positive. 100%. Positive? 100%, yeah. Negative? Fine. Oh. No, of course they're not all positive. No, what of course. What do they say? I think... People I are think, so mean. But I think Audible or similar you know like a yeah. it's a fairly it's a totally anonymous thing right yeah. they can't see your face they've got no idea what you look like yeah you're in their ears right and you know sometimes you listen to stuff and you just don't like it, it, you're not saying this person's dreadful but you might oh no they said i was dreadful not... oh i see <laughs> Well, the one thing, uh, one of the comments was i sound like i'm reading from a washing machine manual wow me, well, I... Mr. Dynamic. <laughs> I said, well, write the book better. <laughs> they did not. Yeah, That's it's in so there. Go harsh. look it up. It's harsh. And then another That's guy was harsh. like, it's hard to switch after the first reader. And I kind of got that. Like, they, they mm. were used to the first guy. They weren't yeah. great books. I don't even know if anybody's listening to these things. They were really just low-budget Jason Bourne-type thrillers. It, I think no offense like... to the author, but, you know. They're kind of the the... This is a bit weird, but I have occasionally found, I mean, I don't, I don't look at them. I think I looked at them at the very beginning, similar sure. to, you You know, you started doing this new thing and you're like, how am I doing? Yeah. Is this yeah. okay? And um, I looked at them a little bit and then obviously when they're positive, you feel great because you're like, oh my God. Do you? I wouldn't this know. Is, this is, I don't this have is that fun. experience, but <laughs> I'll take your word for it. The, <laughs> maybe oh. the guy, listen, maybe he loves washing machine manuals. You don't know. Well, that's what I thought. He might I, love it. I, <laughs> I was so um, full of thank. So full of thank. Um, so I think you've the, gotten a few. Have you gotten a bad few to reviews? Sure. Have you had a gut punch or two? Sure. I mean, well, that hasn't stopped you any. Ideas. I've had accent. I mean, some you know people will. Let's say I don't know. I did a book. In fact, the one that got the earphones award was it was similar to the book that we shared, Todd. Where yeah. the characters. You remember it now. I do. I, you know what? I you looked had to it look up. it up. Yeah, I had to look it up. I looked it up. Yeah, you know, you've done a hundred. I've done like it's six, fine. so it's easy for me to remember. <laughs> it's called the wife in the photo. There it is, the wife in the photo. Check I don't it out. remember who wrote it. Who wrote it? There was a nice lady. I'm gonna check. Emily Shiner. Wow. Hmm. Well, you just recently looked that up because oh, oh, I did. Still yeah, yeah, yeah. Like phone. no, just like moments ago. Yeah, it's still on the <laughs> screen on my phone. Um, <laughs> Emily Shiner. Yeah. Um, Shout out. But, headphones uh, awards sorry I, we, yeah earphones we're, yeah sorry earphones, earphones awards so th that book also moved perspective between two characters most of it was from the the main female character's perspective and then there were some mm. chapters from the main male character's perspective but for that book i did the whole thing right so oh. even the chapters that were from the guy's Man. perspective yeah. and he was very specifically from texas mm-hmm I am um, not from Texas, right? But I'm, I'm you know, and I'm also not a man. I mean, spoiler. So I, right. I did the, I did these chapters with, you know, like the, a hint give us, of a Texan. Give us it. Give us a text. accent. <laughs> I, can't, I can't even now. It's like I just was say, just. How do just say how do y'all how you doing? How do y'all how you doing? Yeah, what's hey. wrong with that? That's fine. That's fine. He's that's okay. Fine. That's a that's a good fair. It's case. fine. But I, he, I did these and, and I mean, you know, I think did an okay job, yeah, you know, they yeah. were, it was fine. But I think there were some people who were from Texas. Yeah. Who loved you know, the book, loved the series. For whom yeah. reasonably, yeah. they're like, yeah. this person is not Texan. Right. Which is true. 
<laughs> you know? And Got so, me. yeah. So I think there's Guilty. sometimes that stuff. Every now and then it's weirdly helpful though. Genuinely. Mm. I, I, uh, obviously it doesn't feel great if somebody doesn't like what you've done or it doesn't work for them or that, you know, you're well, like, I haven't oh. gotten any more work from that client. I'll tell you that. And I was getting, I was getting emails like, "Oh, it's you're doing great. We love this stuff." And then they just saw bad reviews, and they went. And I think, yeah. I, I think the guy planted. I think I got that's planted. shady. It seems shady. Oh, Todd. Oh, Todd. Whatever you're gonna think to yourself. Justina <laughs> brought that up. Just, I was, I was crushed. <laughs> you should have seen me. I was depressed. Weeks. No, I, that would crush. Then, no, I would crush me too. Kind of crushing. I, but Justina was the one that. who said. Oh, mm. it's his friends. His friends when nobody cared who would write a bad review because they're even saying Todd Kramer sucks. And I'm like, why Whoa, would you? That's like, so pointed. You... That's not I know. nice. Like they're using my name. Ugh. I don't know if they said sucks, but. Yeah. Either, I mean, whether it's the people, the randos or the guy that hired you, that obviously is going to feel terrible. So <laughs> that sucks. Well, then that I'm guy sorry. went on to do the fourth one. Yeah. It's just odd. It's just bizarre. Mm. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't, want, I don't want to dwell on it. This is good. I'll now. This is good defense for me, for when I in my future get further bad reviews. Um, I have got some reviews, but never for like a. We have to do a whole episode review on, section on this because it there is. I mean, you do become. I'm I'm fine by the way. To I'm doing a lot of joking, but um, I could care less to be <laughs> to be frank. I know I did a good job with those books. I did the best job anybody could do with those stupid books, um, and I feel good about it. So, uh, <laughs> but you get a thick you skin can... in this business, don't you? I keep it's... convincing myself. You get a thick skin. There's in no this strong business. feelings here. It's all really relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? <laughs> Screw them, stupid books. No, you I. Those... <laughs> but your point that you were going to get to about like I, I think this is a really good topic of reviews and looking at them, and we haven't yeah. talked about it on this podcast yet, and it's interesting you brought it up because yeah. actors have to, like the more um public your work gets the more people are gonna yeah, give their right. opinion yeah and you can the trolls and everybody out there and the more public you get as well the more you're, you but see now someone like kate uh the the good review for me in your case i would say is the the amount of work so had i done a yeah. hundred books and i got a few crap reviews here and there it's like pfft, you know, whatever you can't you can't please everybody. I was on my third, and I'm mm. looking at washing machine manual. This guy needs oh. to stop. You know, whatever they said. Yeah. <laughs> so right. this guy needs to stop. This guy needs Come to on, stop. stop pretending that he can read an audiobook. I'm like, you don't know me. Have you seen the great? And now I'm doing Twain. So now I'm doing Twain. I don't know, and I'm just I'm nervous all the time that. But you're doing Mark Twain. That's cool. It's difficult. It is cool. That is difficult. That's so cool. It is cool, yeah. I try and get that one. I am trying to give it my all because it's part of, well, because it, it it's due respect, you know. It there are books. Some so let me ask you this: mm. books in in terms of the books you do, um, <laughs> are do you have some bias here and there as regards to quality, um. or do you give it all the the they all get the Kate Hanford shine. Oh, that's an interesting question. Thank you. That is an interesting question. I kind of think they all get the same, they all get the same like- Treatment. Treatment. It's the experience of actually then narrate, like actually recording it, actually doing it is a different thing, depending right. on what type of book it is. It's more about the genre, I think, than, okay. than anything else. Like, a, you know, the the- if it's a cop show kind of vibe and you're on right. book 18, then you're just in there and you're like, it's almost like you're in the, I don't but know, you, you're like don't go. in the show. <laughs> yeah, right, know? right, okay. And you're like doing these characters and you're like, oh yeah, this guy, I love this guy, he's back. You know, like it's it's a bit oh, more, right, right. I, see. You get I guess it. what I mean is it's like the energy's a bit more off the cuff in the sense of- So you're kind of the viewer as well or the listener and yeah. the reader at the same time. Yeah, and then if it's a book where, I don't know, you're reading it and you're like, this is, I don't know, cool. I did a William Boyd novel a few years ago that was, you know, like just this unbelievably beautiful book. Like the right. prose is wild right. and it's quite dense and there's a lot going on and there's all of these, we're moving in time and there's all these characters. Right. And wow. so it just takes a bit more 
yeah of a of a Emotional. of a like focused energy yeah. if that makes sense yeah. rather than this kind of like we're having a great time and yeah. you know emotional commitment even yeah i yeah. guess i was reading i, guess I read that's... a i read a twain that was quite sad in a lot of ways mm. and i i struggled uh, oh man i get really emotion yeah i really do i've been doing a lot recently of these i was saying i've kind of shifted genre recently so yeah, like yeah, not yeah, i mean I i'm still doing the the detective stuff but i'm also recently been doing a lot of um more non-fiction and oh. some mm, of cool. some like mindfulness and you know right. climate yeah. crisis stuff and oh god it. yeah, yeah and it's like i'm <laughs> The one the of them, I was in the cupboard, and I was like, I was so choked up by the time I, I was like, I have to get out of the cupboard and yeah. like take a second because the this cupboard. is just going to sound like strangled, and you know, yeah, you have to wow. just read the book. But I think it can be, yeah, I think it can be really kind it, of. It can emotion. be. I was there was one about it totally was a, a girl's love for her horse, and it was from the perspective, but it was, and oh. I, it was a whole uh, thing, and the horse died. And oh, spoiled, Mark, you know, oh, yeah, what you doing? Mark. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> And I was just like, yeah. I had to take your breaks and stuff. So that that does happen too. I mean, acting yeah. is an emotional strain, anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Well, listen, that means you're plugged into it. That, like, I I think it's yeah. like, not of course, not every book is going to have that kind of an uh, an effect. But I think it's a good, I think it's a good sign if it does in a way. You know, it means totally. you're, you're yeah. engaged with it and you yeah like you're yeah. taking it and whoever might listen to it seriously so off the books now moving let's, on let's let's close that chapter <laughs> hey you see what i did there jay well done. get it thank you well done. um god i'm good i'm good with those and now I'm so, um can't read what is he talking um what's next for kate hanford what's <laughs> I want to talk uh, a little bit more about your acting before we 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 yeah. did a do. Sure. So now now poor things is coming out. Now that's a big and you had a good size mm -hmm. kind of chunky little cameo in that, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Is um, there excitement in the Kate Hanford camp? I mean, definitely. <laughs> it's a funny thing though. I mean, you know this. It's like there's definitely excitement. It's incredibly gratifying for something that you did, especially when it's been a couple of years. You you know, yeah, we made yeah. it and now it's there and you get to actually see it and right, you go right. to the cinema and your scene hasn't been cut and you're like, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, God. this is fantastic. But And it's an Oscar contender. It is. At this point, yeah. Just it for is. For everybody that doesn't it know is. that. It won a Golden Globe, even. Right? BAFTA? I mean, probably. yeah, it's 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 doing yeah, it's, it's, it's doing great. It's ranking well, yeah. But um it's not as I have discovered many, many times, there's not necessarily any direct correlation between something, you know, something coming out and being in the cinema and then suddenly the phone's ringing off the hook and there's all of this stuff going on. Yeah. And that's yeah. happened like countless yeah. times time and time again, yeah. to all of us where, and I don't know, I think my anticipation with this one very specifically, I think I'd... I was in a bit of a different headspace with the whole thing in the sense of, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting, I didn't, I haven't been expecting it to suddenly make a ma like radical change in my life Yeah. in yeah. terms of the work that's coming my way or what I'm getting. I imagine that it will, it can, you know, these things can only be good. Yeah. But more than anything else, I think I'm just like, I'm, I'm enjoying so much watching this thing that I'm part of, that I'm really proud of go out into the world and people see it and you know getting messages from friends i haven't seen in years back in canada being like i spat my whole coke on the woman in front of me because i didn't know you were in it <laughs> like, oh that's you know, so fun. or like this kind of thing it's really like that is that's really cool and that's really yeah the, yeah that's sort of gratifying. gratifying yeah Grat yeah like that's the nice thing to focus on i think um Love it. and then yeah like who knows who knows what happens next? I genuinely have no idea. Do you have In any sort of plans question. or ambitions or talk? I mean, for, you know, yeah. Plans actors, or ambitions. Actors don't always have those, but sometimes. Yeah. You know, I'm trying, I'm trying actually to have more of those. I'm trying to be a bit more. I did, I did a, 
a course just before Christmas that was like a three three month thing with a an old friend and actress coach back in Toronto. So we did it on Zoom. Mm. And it was all about this. It was all about like getting back, plugged back in to why you're doing the whole thing in the first place. Mm. So that you do feel empowered to, or like have, feel like you have some sense of agency so that you can feel like you can have aspirations and plans. Mm. Does that make sense? Because I feel like so much of the time we're just yeah. like, I don't know, like, I don't know what's going to come next. So I'll just wait. Yeah, you just see. hope it's, it's, it's built on hope really. And uh, yeah, which I think you need luck. Yeah. And that's, uh, there's always the, yeah, but you also always... need to be proactive. Uh, you do. But it's hard to say how, what is the best course of action to be proactive. Do mm. I take more courses? Do I upgrade? The, but, an, you know, an actor always needs to be upgrading the website, the bio, the headshot, mm -hmm. uh, the, the show reel. Maybe, mm. yeah, taking classes, uh, networking. You know, there's, there's a lot that you can do, um, but it's hard to know what to do that's going to be, yeah. you know changing do you change agents you get a manager do you try to get to la i mean what you know yeah i mean i don't know i've been thinking about this a lot lately okay this whole conundrum of like especially if you're i mean i'm i don't at the moment I, at least i'm not somebody who makes their own work you know like i don't write yeah. i don't make my own shows lots of my friends do and then that's their way of like i need that's to be proactive so i'm gonna be yeah. creatively right. proactive rather yeah. than because i think yeah produce something, do a, you know, write a show, write a podcast, write an audio drama, whatever, you know. Yeah. But I think if you don't do that, or at least at the moment aren't doing that, then it's really easy to get caught in the spiral of like, I'm just going to do endless admin right. of updating mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. I've found it really useful to me recently, instead of just doing the admin of whatever, to take stock of the whole body of work on a more regular basis and figure mm -hmm. out what all of the connective tissue, like what are the themes <laughs> of the work that I've done, you know, because they do exist. And I think that helps. I feel like I've got more sense of an ag agency. So know? are you saying that essentially you're understanding who you are as an actor yeah. better based on the performance, the body of work? Yeah, totally. And I think across for me anyway, because I do, I think I've also recently, I see the voiceover and the audiobooks very much. I used to really see them as separate things. Mm. Yeah. Like there was the acting and then I do also do voiceover. Right. And it's almost like the voiceover is supporting the acting. Right. Which, you know, is logistically is often the way it goes. Like that's often true if you're yeah. like, financially it is supporting the acting. But also there i think there are th there are things that run through like there are themes or like types of types of books i tend to work on types of characters i tend to play that yeah. do repeat yeah or you know like there are themes you can pull out and then i'm like oh cool so i'm this sort of act like i do this kind of work hmm. and hmm. i hadn't necessarily realized that and then i feel like a bit more like i've got some sort of it's interesting agency over the whole thing yeah you know? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because you, you sort of start to see yourself through other people's eyes because other people are seeing you in a certain way and they're casting you in a certain way. Mm. And it's not until that comes back and confronts you in the form of like, I watched it on telly or mm -hmm. in, in a movie and I said, oh, this is, would you call that typecasting? Yeah, I guess so. And then also, yeah, because then you can do that. And then you see how other people see you. This is the work I'm doing. And then you can also check in with like, is that the work I want to be doing? As in, is that still what I'm interested right, in? That right. type of stuff. Do That's I, I yeah. Do yeah, I like you say, that type, yeah. like, do what I gel with that still? Or do I want to right. go chat to my agent or just chat yeah. to myself and be right. like, oh, I want to actually, I kind of want to try and head in this direction. How could I do that? Yeah. Um, what were you, or it may be a bit, all that. Um, I just, I, Maybe. you're, what you're talking about is really activating me actually. And I'm getting like a sense of, 
you know, what it seems like you're doing is like connecting what you're talking about is like connecting to your sense of self, right. And connecting mm -hmm. to like your purpose, what you're doing, your whole body of work, what you've done. And when you're saying about, you know, giving yourself agency, it's like, you're almost like you're giving your unconscious, your, your spirit, your unconscious self permission to create the future, right. That it wants to right? like, you're not just trying to be like, I should be doing this. I should be doing this. You're like, grabbing hold of who you are so that like your mm. vision of the future can open up naturally sub uh, like unconsciously yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. if something's taking shape here yeah yeah and that that will be your guide essentially exactly once, so you're once. like then then you stop seeing all of it as these separate oh well like i did one you know then also even if you're like oh man like i only did one job in the last yeah. year or yeah two years or whatever then but if it's connected to all the other stuff then that doesn't feel like such a big deal either yeah um but yeah i totally agree then you're like then you can see what the the path ahead yeah, kind of yeah like your body you're like illuminated yeah like you're allowed to like yeah, see the yeah, whole thing yeah. you're like yeah. oh okay this is yeah take a step there's back. something there we, we, that's mm. worth it's a revelation actually i never really thought of it that way either but going back and looking at your body of work and understanding how you're being cast and the kind of characters you've been playing and how others are casting you and looking at you and how the roles and your identity as an actor and playing those roles dictate in a lot of ways or can start to dictate your your natural organic direction yeah as you that's uh, that, yeah organic yeah. direction i like i i like that i like like in or yeah organically because i think that's oftentimes we as actors yeah. struggle with like what we should be doing and oftentimes it's like some some yes there's some. something natural there's something that we mm. like we're meant to be doing right a purpose and things that like we are yeah. naturally good good at and can do and you know, when yeah, there's a middle ground yourself. between the thing that you that what you want to be and what you or the the kinds of roles you want to play and the kind of actor you want to be and the one that is just taking shape uh, organically. Yeah, as exactly. It were. And then somewhere in the middle is going. You're going to find yourself as an actor, your identity. Yeah. Yeah. Your acting identity. Exactly. God, that's good. Man, cool. we really we cracked the we just cracked it. That's we it. Cracked guys. the code. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Acting done. What else you got? <laughs> Kate, it's uh, been delightful. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for what coming. What a on. pleasure. Yeah. Of course. Thanks for having me. Anything you want to plug? Uh go see poor things, guys. It's really yeah. good. <laughs> it is. Is it in theaters now? Yeah. In theaters yeah. right now. It's all it's all over the place, actually. Yeah. And if my you, flatmate if, loves it. Oh, Does he? I'm glad. He, he's obsessed. I'll, I'm well, going to tell him after this. I'll be like, oh, I just interviewed someone in Poor Things. He loves it. He he'll go it. back and he'll want to see. And like, oh, my God. He might watch it again. He really, he's a cinephile. He loved it. Oh, I'm so glad. That's great. Yeah. Watch Poor Things. Give Kate a big review. Two thumbs up, five stars, however you do that. So that Hollywood... <laughs> yeah that yeah. knows that she call was, hollywood and call hollywood and them. get on the phone and tell them yeah yeah mark ruffalo's cool emma stone whatever but kate that kate hanford <laughs> and then go and when you, if you got a bunch of free time folks listen to those audiobooks there's a hundred to choose from yeah yeah now that get you know what there. she sounds like get, get in, in there get in there <laughs> and uh if you're into thrillers you can check out the one the, the three i did they're called breed thrillers and you know and i i read them like this breed went to the store he liked to buy something to eat then he went home oh he was so tired poor breed what's wrong with that i like All right. that there's also an accent <laughs> that's really fun Thank you, Kate, yes. the guest. Oh, yeah, back to the guest. Thank you, Kate. A big round of applause. Uh, Yay. Thanks, guys. Beautiful. Thanks so much for coming and joining us. Oh, of course. Kate, we'll be in touch. All we'll right. Talk soon. Talk All soon. Right. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. 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 Wow. Another one in the books. Another one. But I think we really came to some revelation there. I'm not sure why. I just what. think it's 
well, I'm just going to go. I will be thinking about, you know, looking at myself, you know, trying to connect the dots mm -hmm. of, you know, past and the present and the future. I just the there's something there. There's something about like grasping hold of yourself yeah. um, and what you've done. There's something there. I, I thought that was cool. I thought she brought. Yeah, she brought something there. That. And uh, yeah. it's something I'd never really because, again, you start off wanting to do, you know, I started off wanting to do comedy. Uh, I, 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 I'm a comedy guy, but I don't have a comedy face. Okay. Good looking. <laughs> I'm just too handsome. There's yeah. nobody in comedy that's as handsome as me. And there it's been. It's Beautiful people than, aren't funny. Right. Brad Pitt isn't funny. Nobody thinks he's no. funny. Nobody goes, oh, Brad Pitt, he's hysterical. You know, I'm it's a blessing Brad. and a curse. Nothing against Brad. I'm sure he makes people laugh all the time, but being this good looking is a blessing and a curse. No. Um, <laughs> But just to give an example, I've always... started in comedy and now... I, I'm, 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 I, I'm drawn personally to comedy and that's my forte. That's what I like. Improv, stand up, uh, you know, bring me all the funny. But I'm generally and generally usually cast it, like military because mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm tall. I got kind of an angry resting bitch face. Squared a resting off quack face. Quack face. That's not a dirty word. Uh, we don't have to quack that. I don't think so. We'll see. We'll see what the censors say. Anyway, the point being is that, um, you know, over time, but I've done some stuff that was like funny military guy. Um, you know, so there, there was, there, there has been crossover. I don't think I can get away from my look and the way that people perceive me, right, in, in the casting game, in the business, but also where my talents are and where my proclivities are. And then somewhere in the middle there is going to shape, um, yeah. you know, there's a form, there's something form shaping all there. of yeah. these. Yeah. Who I am as a performer and, and as an artist, maybe then the direction I need to sort of, yeah, as an artist. And then the, maybe the direction I need to head in, um, in the future hmm. and aim myself towards that a little bit. Kate does a lot of, kind of i i know what she's talking about because her, her characters are sort of these quirky women um well i don't want to put too fine a thing a, a note on it what, what would you say i mean a, uh, nymph put a twig in it yeah put a twig on it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of nymph, like a lot of sort of sexualized characters uh youthful I'm, I'm, characters i'm less good at the the, the brand i'm less good at the branding thing um I saw her as she's doing, I, I, I thought she was an interesting, a good actress that wasn't afraid to do the sexual things. Um, and that's what I got from the show reel, you know, wasn't afraid yeah. to be sexual. Also was, is able to be still and hold her own um, in a scene in an emotionally tense situation. Yeah. And also has been in poor yeah. things and was being a funny character. So I, I don't know what brand that is. I don't either. And that's, that. but that's maybe the whole acting journey. Maybe it's never fully defined in the end. But it's it's always sort of being, you know, it's being defined. I remember like um, Bradley Cooper, for example, was doing a lot of because he's handsome, very handsome guy. He was and but he's a very talented actor and he went he, he went all the right channels in acting. But I just remember something about his story was that, you know, he was getting a lot of best friend surfer kind of guy, the regular guy, the dude, you know, makes sense. Right. Based on his look and his kind of yeah. his, his attitude and stuff like that. And it wasn't until uh, I forgot the director, he said, that was working with him or somebody that said, you know, I, I think you're actually a very talented actor. And he was like, thanks. Yeah, I, I believe I am as well. And then he started being treated more as an actor and less as like, oh, the guy that can play these roles. And that's when he started to his career started to kind of morph and progress and change because he was established as more talented than just a look. Hmm. And maybe that's something we all have to kind of try to pull ourselves out of and get, get away from. But using our look in order to initially determine and uh, flesh yeah, it's out. it's part of our shape. It's part of our yeah, shape. If, if, we're, exactly. if we're going on this concept, it's yeah. all part of the shape. It's all yeah. just part of it. Cool, 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 cool. What's your shape? Um, my shape is my shape. Jay genie, like a genie lantern. Um, your what shape is my is your shape? shape? That's not an answer. Your shape is your shape. Well, you ask a question, then I give an answer. Pear right? shaped. That's you. You're pear shaped. Uh, 
Okay, fine. <laughs> you know what my shape? You know what my shape is? My shape is ever changing, just like a crystal in the middle of a table. Every time you walk around it, you see a different angle of it. Is this where you roll the die and then you tell everybody? Yeah, my shape is a dice. That's exactly it. My shape is a twenty-sided dice. There it is. My shape shape is a twenty. My shape is a dungeon master. Is there a shape? It's a hundred-sided dice. That's my shape. Actually, love it. That's my shape. Jay Genie's got a. uh, Has he got a uh, a dungeon? A dungeon to. uh, I just did it yesterday. Master. It's some. Did you? It was. It was great. Yeah, but we we've been going on for ninety-three minutes, so we should. Oh, are you telling me when to wrap up the show? Is that how it works now? No, no. Okay. No, Fine. I'll say when we wrap up the show. Okay, great. Okay. Let's wrap up the show. Yes, sir. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome, Kate Hanford. Thank you, Kate. So that grateful. Was so good. That was really cool. Yeah. We need more of that, don't we? Well, we, we, you get great guests. I got to say, pro so tip. Far. Yeah. We've got lucky. Well done. Let's hope for more and more and more. Thank you for joining us on Offstage Acting. We'll see you next time. Bye. Jay Genie. Oh my gosh, you won't. You will you will say that forever. You will say that forever. Well, you will say it forever. You're the one who calls yourself that. Thanks I again, don't. Kate. I say goodbye to Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for coming on.